I heard among our friends, you have a retirement plan. Getting going back and getting politically active, mm -hmm. you know, in my home state, I was always going back to Nebraska, and and I did make a promise to the kids mm -hmm. um, after the the bill passed the second round to the third round. I promised them that if it passed, I would come back and I would fight for them. This is the Transparency Podcast Show. This is uh, Jesse. I wanted to get a chance to uh, let everyone know uh, what's been going on since uh, my move to Nebraska. So as uh, a lot of you know, uh, I uh, bought a house in Omaha at the end of uh, July, and I am now a Nebraska resident, and uh, I bought my house in uh, Legislative District 31, which was the district that uh, Kathleen Kauth, uh, the sponsor of the anti-trans legislation in Nebraska um, last year, uh, did. Uh, and so uh, I, I picked that, that house in that area for that reason, because I want to make sure that that this gal is not reelected to the Nebraska legislature because of the horrible things that she did this last session. And I am not alone <laughs> in, in that wish. There's a, a lot of folks there that are doing that. Um, so anyway, I wanted to give you an update on what all has been going on. I'm, I'm still working as a prosecutor. As you can see, I'm here in my office in Los Angeles in the DA's office, uh, just getting done with my work day. Um, and I'm been going back and forth uh, between LA and Nebraska uh, doing uh, teleworking. So that's a, a fun uh, aspect of the job is that they, they are letting me do some teleworking. Uh, I have made a lot of contacts in Nebraska and I am now, um, I can say that I am a uh, one of the uh, delegates to the uh, the county party central committee for the Democratic Party for Douglas County. So I'm getting involved on a local level in politics. I've met with so many state senators uh, from Nebraska during the course of the last few months, some as they've been uh, getting ready to announce their own runs, uh, some that have been uh, involved in uh, uh, not being re up for re-election but supporting those who are. And uh, so I have met a ton of folks, and I have met with campaign consultants. I have met with individuals who uh, are treasurers. And so I've, I've started laying the groundwork for a potential run. I have had so many people telling me that they want me to run for this office in Nebraska, that Nebraska needs to hear my voice and that they need to um, uh, see me involved in the political process there. Uh, and uh, um, it is somewhat of a daunting task to be able to do that. And I uh, have been working at that, looking at that. Uh, I actually met with uh, one of the elected state officials there, uh, uh, Deb Neary, who is on the Nebraska uh, State Board of Education. Uh, interestingly enough, Deb served on the uh, the State Board of Education with my high school basketball coach, Robin Stevens, who was a, an amazing man. He got taken out in the election uh, last year by uh, the group's uh, Moms for Liberty type folks, those folks who did so horribly yesterday in the elections, uh, thank goodness. But uh, I met with her, and one of the pieces of advice that she gave me was to not announce that I'm running too early. Uh, that there is time that I, I don't have to announce that I'm running right now. And frankly, I can't announce that I'm running right now because um, I am snowed down in work and I am, I'm not ready to retire just yet. Uh, I do have more work that I need to do. So I'm, I'm going to continue to explore the process. And uh, like I said, I have campaign officials who are lined up who are ready to work on my campaign and ready to, to join in uh, helping to get me elected uh, to the legislature there. So um, I am not making an announcement just yet that I am running. Uh, I am um, looking at the prospect of it. I, there's no need for me to get involved in, in making an announcement now. I'm, I'm attending meetings. I'm meeting folks. I'm meeting people. I'm door walking uh, in my area 
to um, to to work to get uh, um, a Democratic congressman for the second district. So that is important, and that allows me to get out and to meet people in the community. And I want to continue to do that. I want to uh, get myself ingrained into the the Omaha community, especially the Millard area where I'm living. There's some amazing folks there, some of my friends uh, that I've known long before I decided to move back to Nebraska are in the area, so I get to see them. Um, And so I'm not making the announcement right now that I'm running. Uh, I I do need to take the next couple of months because of uh, some things that happened at work. I had an attorney that... uh, had been assigned to my unit for uh, a, a large number of years who uh, got transferred uh, a couple weeks ago. And this is the second lawyer that I've had transferred out from under me, and I had a third retire, and um, I've only gotten one replacement. So when I took over at this job, I had four lawyers I was supervising. I'm now supervising two. Our workload has increased dramatically, and so... I have to spend the next month or two totally reorganizing my section, and that means that I do not have time to run a campaign in Nebraska to to do that at this point. Uh, It doesn't mean that I don't have the ability to get out and meet people and start getting involved in the community, which is what I am doing. Um, But I, I can't announce that I'm running at this time just because it would not be fair to those folks uh, who want to see me elected if I cannot donate, if I cannot dedicate full time to to running for office, which is what it's going to take. Uh, I love Nebraska. (laughs) It it was uh, so cool. I had to blow out my uh, sprinkler system at my house so that the pipes don't freeze during wintertime when I was back there. Uh, I'm getting ready to head back. I'll be there. I'll be home on Friday. and uh, we'll be there, uh, you know, through Thanksgiving and a little bit after that. Uh, then I'm coming back to L.A. for a few days, and then I am flying to Washington, D.C. to see the next group of trans lawyers who are getting admitted to the U.S. Supreme Court to practice. I'm going to go for their ceremony because it is such an incredibly moving, exciting thing to see. And to see more trans lawyers getting to practice before the Supreme Court is, is something that I just I love that I'm having the ability to do that. And so uh, with that, uh, that is kind of my update. Uh, After I uh, go to uh, D.C., I'm flying back to Nebraska for a little bit, but I do plan on spending Christmas here in California, hopefully getting to see my kids and and folks um, and uh, get to enjoy my hot tub. Uh, Yes, I... I, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of comments that I need to buy a hot tub in uh, Omaha uh, for my house, and I may end up doing that. Anyway, uh, this is uh, just a quick update to tell you where I'm at. Um, I totally love uh, my life the way it is now, kind of going back and forth. It is definitely... Uh, a little bit draining, and it's a, and it's sometimes I, I I wake up going, where am I? <laughs> what day is it? But uh, it is it is something that I, I love getting back into my Nebraska roots and getting back in with the folks, you know, from home and and getting back there to try to make a difference for the trans folks who are there. So I am um, definitely uh, enjoying it. I'm definitely seriously considering the the prospect of running uh the interesting thing is is i am already inside uh the the setting state senator's head she has taken to the airwaves and a podcast out of australia i have posted it on my story and i i think there's a little bit on on what i've done a post on it but uh she definitely does not like me i, I make her nervous i i i somehow uh it I, it makes her feel bad to uh, identify me as being a woman because in her mind I I'm not a woman and I never will be a woman uh, so therefore she needs to legislate against my being able to function in society which is um, is so sad because there's so many amazing trans people in this world and wanting to try to eliminate us and not be able to participate in in society is just 
so incredibly wrong. And as we found yesterday with the, the election cycles in the multiple locations where we have um, uh, fought back and uh, I, I think there were 24,000 school board seats up for election uh, yesterday and uh, Moms for Liberty is touting their 50 wins. Uh, that is not... <laughs> <laughs> that is not a good time. So anti-trans, anti-choice are both horrible political positions to stake out. And, and my my state senator is somebody who believes there should be no abortions and no trans people should exist. So uh, it's something that I, I feel very strongly about fighting for. Uh, you know, taking the, the, the medical decisions out of the hands of patients and doctors is so wrong and is so wrong. So, um, I'm going to keep at it. Uh, I know I've got a question uh, from uh, um, uh, somebody wanting to know when my last day in the office is, and I'm, I don't know. <laughs> the, the honest answer is I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to retire. I, I don't know if it's going to be next year or if it's going to be the year after. Uh, it all depends. Um, I have a lot of uh, a lot of things to think about, a lot of things that I need to consider. Uh, being able to run an effective campaign, being able to do it fully, and be able to be fully invested in it is something that that I, if I'm going to do it, that is what I'm going to do. And I I just don't know whether I'm going to have the bandwidth to be able to do that this election cycle, or if I may have to wait. But one thing I can guarantee you is that I will be out there pounding the pavement to make sure that Kathleen Kauth is not reelected as a state senator because she is so wrong for the state of Nebraska and has done so much harm to the unicameral system that we have there uh, and one that I love. So uh, I am definitely, that is nothing that is off the, off the track. I am going to be working tirelessly to do that. And to that end, I, I do have to testify, uh, I believe, on the 28th in Lincoln. There's a public hearing on the, um, the uh, gender-affirming care for minors uh, rules that have been established. Uh, those rules are draconian. Uh, they are way too detailed and too... Uh, restrictive. Uh, basically, uh, a kid has to undergo almost a year of therapy uh, before they're even eligible to take any type of medication. And the uh, therapy has to be non, non-affirming. And, and that goes against all of the, the dictates of medical professionals, uh, especially counselors and such. They're, they're asking them to violate their professional rules of of responsibility and conduct. There are professional rules of how to treat patients. And uh, it's a horrible, horrible um, restriction, a horrible law. And I want to take my part to at least go and testify and explain why it is and, and why it should not be in place. Uh, I have a feeling that we're going to end up with having to go to court on these issues, and, and I may be able to f- help fight on that. So... Um, and somebody's asking, uh, how do they come up with these rules? Well, uh, they go to all of the gender critical folks and find the most draconian uh, things that they can figure out uh, that will make it look like they're giving an option to somebody to pursue gender affirming care when in fact it's, um, uh, you've heard of the carrot and the stick, right? Well, they have a carrot, but you never, uh, they have a stick, but you never get the carrot. They keep putting, um, requirements in front of you to, to do certain things, promising that you'll be able to get blockers or hormones, uh, but yet you never can because they change the goalposts all the way through. Their, their goal is to deny kids the ability to um, uh, get gender-affirming care, force them through their, uh, their um, natal puberty uh, because they have a belief that trans kids are not trans, and, and if they go through puberty, they'll discover they're not trans, and everything will be happy, and they will be joyful, and they will evolve into loving their bodies that they have. And that's BS. I know, because I went through it. I, I hated my puberty. I didn't want to be pu- I, I wanted to go through a different puberty, and it took me a long time to do it. Uh, and so, w- hopefully, that... Um, We'll be able to turn some of this back uh, 
uh, there's a real possibility that uh, the Supreme Court will take up the issue of standard of review to determine whether or not these are violations of due process and whether or not these uh, violate the 14th Amendment, uh, these types of restrictions. Uh, I have been asked to be uh, amicus uh, on, on four other amicus briefs that are going up to different courts. I believe it's the uh, 11th, the 8th, the 4th, and the U.S. Supreme Court. So uh, I'm doing what I can. Uh, I'm trying to get my story out there, my support for these type of, uh, of treatments, uh, and we'll see if we can make some headway on that. Anyway, uh, I'll let you all get back to your lives. I've got uh, some other things that I've got to do. And uh, thank you all for listening in. And if you have any questions about what I'm doing, where I'm at, uh, what's going to be in the future, you know, feel free to DM me. My DMs are always open. I, I get back to most people. Sometimes if you're not one of my followers or not somebody I'm following, you're message ends up in my spam folder and sometimes I don't go through that for weeks at a time but I do actually go through and and respond to to ones that I think are are appropriate uh, I get a lot of weird stuff in my DMs as anybody who's trans will tell you they do uh, so uh, I don't respond to all of them some of them sit there for a long time but uh, I'm gonna do what I can do because I think that we definitely cannot let the tide turn the way that it is. We have to swim against it, we have to push against it, and we have to beat it back. So, thank you everybody for your support. Uh, I, I do love that I have people who, who love and support me. So thank you, and I hope everyone has a great evening, and I will keep you up to date probably in a month or two to let you know where we're at as far as the campaign is concerned, and to uh, see if I'm getting inside of uh, Ms. Kalt's head a little bit more because for some reason she just does not like me and I don't understand it because most people do. I mean, I'm a very likable person. <laughs> okay. Anyway, thank you everybody and have a great night.